Support for this podcast comes from Synchrony. Are your customers reluctant to share their personal financial information with your sales team? Help eliminate any customer concerns by allowing them to apply for financing using their personal device with Synchrony's direct-to-device technology. This completely paperless process not only saves time, it helps reduce input error and frees your sales representative to handle other tasks. Customers can apply using direct-to-device through a secure email sent to their device or by scanning a custom QR code. For more information on direct-to-device and how to get set up, call your Synchrony sales team at 877-891-9803 or visit toolbox.syf.com. Welcome to The Successful Contractor, powered by CertainPath, formerly Success Group International, a show for residential contractors about residential contractors. We chronicle business journeys, share insights, and celebrate successes in this wonderful industry. I'm your host, Bob Houchin. As a reminder, all episodes of The Successful Contractor are available on YouTube, as well as your podcast player of choice. And yes, you heard me correctly, SGI is now CertainPath. We've rebranded ourselves under a name that we believe best represents what we do for residential contractors, and that's put them on a certain path to success. For more information on what we can do for you, visit our new site, www.mycertainpath.com, or give us a call at 866-299-8505. Today's show is another Certain Path monthly member discussion. These are interactive live programs where I interview Certain Path members on a certain topic. The topic of this call, call centers, how to maximize every opportunity that comes into your office. And I have two incredible guests who are call center managers to talk about this hugely important topic, and I'll let them introduce themselves in just a second. I hope you enjoy the show and take away another or two. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for another monthly member discussion. I'm your host, Bob Houchin. Uh, Monthly member discussions, your opportunities to hear from members like you explain what they're doing to be successful. Think of it as a little slice of expo coming to you through your computer or phone every month. Uh, This month, we're talking about call centers. You know, a a strong call center can help you drive down your marketing expense while also increasing your closing percentage and average ticket. And they do it by turning phone calls into appointments and capturing all that critical information a tech or a sales pro needs to be successful. Uh, today, we have two great call center managers that talk with me about the roles, and I'll introduce them in a second. But I wanted to be sure to shout out, to give a shout out to Missy Jones and Sonia Fryer, two of our exceptional coaches who are also uh, call center trainers. Um, there, I, I emailed them and said, hey, uh, what, what do you think I should ask these two fine ladies we have on uh, today? And they sent me two pages of notes, each of them in about two minutes. So uh, they made my job pretty easy this time. So thank you, you two, for being uh, the incredible people you are. Um, One quick note to everyone watching, uh, just as a reminder, as we go through today's topic, if you have a question about what some, some, you know, what some, about what something someone said, uh, there should be a little box at the bottom of your screen where you can type a question. The last 10 minutes or so uh, in the hour, I'll be sure to ask our fine panelists those questions. So just wanted to be sure to mention that. Uh, without further ado, here are our panelists. First, uh, live right here, as you can see here, we have uh, Miss Janie Contreras of Home Service Heroes in Tampa, Florida. Janie, how are you? Hi, guys. Doing great. Thanks for great. having me. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. Also, uh, we don't have uh, any video with Melissa Holland, but uh, we, we certainly have her audio. We have Miss Melissa Holland of Sirius Plumbing and Air Conditioning in Carrollton, Texas. Melissa, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? (laughs) We we sure can. You sound loud and clear. So that's all that matters. Uh, Appreciate you uh, being here uh, for the show. So (laughs) of course, of course. Sorry, having a few a few tech issues as always, but that's okay. Uh, All that matters is the great content that these two are going to share with us and and they're going to give us some great stuff. Uh, Ladies, I'll bounce back and forth to each of you um, as I as I have kind of each new question. And and Janie, let's let's we're going to start off and just dig into this and I'll I'll start with you. Can you kind of share with everyone your background? How did you get into this industry? So oh, hi guys. Good afternoon. Um, I started at this company six years ago this July. Mm-hmm. Um, I was actually at a nursery farm dispatching, you know, plants from the Key West up to New York and Texas. And I had a, I had a, a colleague who heard had known about this place, and they're looking for a CSR agent. And I was like, well, might as well give it a try. I have a little bit of experience, and um, here I am today. Six very years good. <laughs> Six years later. Very good. Very good. Now, Melissa, how about you? How did you get into this home services industry? 
Well, I have been living the call center life for a little over 16 years now. Wow. Um, okay. I've been in the home service industry for 12 of those years. Mm -hmm. So I was initially working for a large jewelry corporation, um, which I said two weeks into that call center job, it was my first that I would never work in a call center again, but here we are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, an opportunity at a local electrical company had presented itself. And so I just jumped on it and I've never looked back. That's great. Very good. Always good to, to learn where, where people come from. And it's good for the members and the owners are on to kind of get an idea of where to look for, for great talent. And you two obviously are that. Um, Jenny, I'm going to jump back to you. How many CSRs and dispatchers do you have in your team today? So I currently have four CSRs and as well as in between their dispatchers too. Okay. So they also five. okay, very good. And Melissa, how about you? What's your team in Sirius look like? Uh, we have two CSRs and two dispatchers currently. Okay, very good. It's just good for people to know. Mm -hmm. um, Melissa, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll, we'll start this next question with you. What is your what does your day look like? How do you handle your manager responsibilities versus CSR responsibilities? Do you utilize a, a checklist to kind of make sure everything get, happens? Uh, maybe talk through what your what, what every day looks like for you. Yeah, so it's a challenge sometimes to balance the two, um, especially because I do sit on the floor with the team mm -hmm. um, to kind of keep that open communication. Um, but I would say my responsibilities shift back and forth depending on the needs of the business. Mm -hmm. So most mornings I spend my time getting the day started, handling the influx of calls. Um, and then as things start to calm down, I'm able to shift my focus. Mm -hmm. uh, I do use a daily checklist to keep me on track and to prevent myself from squirreling off, as I like to say. Sure. Um, but, um, but I'm still there day in, day out with the team communicating um, and just some things on my checklist include, you know, combing the schedule, listening to calls, um, mm -hmm. look for possible scheduling errors and just communicating booking needs. Um, That's great. Now, do you just keep that? Is it like something you keep on, on your computer or is it something just written that you just keep an eye on and, you know, that's nearby or how do you have it structured? Um, it's not structured very well, but it's structured well <laughs> for my, if that makes sense. So sure. I, yeah, whatever works for you a handy dandy little notebook and I write uh -huh. down things that I need to do throughout the day. Um, it's probably repetitive, but it helps me to commit to memory to physically write something down and then cross it off the list. Sure. I've tried a printed out checklist before and yeah. I don't know, my brain just glazes over it. So um, it helps me to actually write down the start of my day. Like these are the things I need to do and then check them off one by one. Sure. No, very good. Very good. Jenny, let's talk about you. How do you handle your manager responsibilities versus CSR responsibilities? And same thing, do you have any kind of checklists or something to help you remind yourself of everything you've got to get done in a day? Yes. So we actually have a procedure in place. Each one of my girls, they have different shifts, but they have deadlines that need to be made, made, be made every morning. Uh, mm -hmm. So we do open at 7 a.m. Phones are transferred from the call center. We uh, review the call center. The, um, we have a nighttime service that handles our calls whenever we're closed. Uh, so we review those calls, uh, schedule them as needed, and then we verify all payments have came in um, from the technicians from the night before, get okay. those processed, ran through checkbook, and then deposited to our CFO. And uh, by that time, everybody's dispatched by 8.15, the latest, and our technicians are aware, customers are called out, and then um, for me, as myself, as a manager, I have my own uh, reports that I have to be sent to my other peers by nine, and then we have our manager meeting by 9.30. So it's pretty very, it's very structural, and yep. uh, everybody knows what they need to do. In the event I was away from my desk, my girls already have their uh, process and procedures in place, and it flows really well. That's great. That's great. Um, just kind of, I'll go ahead and, and follow up you with this next question. You talked about overnight calls. You said, who handles those overnights? Do you have a service that does that or is there someone on call or who, who manages so it? We have two options. We have a call point. They're a primarily overnight service. They're based out of Arizona. Yep. Uh, they take our calls from 6 p.m. at closing till 7 a.m. the next morning. Mm -hmm. Now, my ladies also have the chance to, you know, make some money. We have an after hours uh, program that we do where the girls can make um, an incentive per booked call, per non-booked call, just so yeah. market or whatever the case may be. Uh, so we have two options, but primarily it is the call point agency that we've hired. And then my girls are secondary. 
So how yeah so so how does that how does that work functionally if I'm a, an owner watching this like do you, is it certain nights someone only is going to work a couple nights call point covers the other nights or or what's that stru how's that structured? So we have four managers and mm -hmm. each week every manager is assigned to kind of uh, watch over call the call point agency. Um, mm -hmm. They have to call us for every call that's booked after hours. We approve it. We uh, assist with scheduling and dispatching at that time. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what the call point agency, they completely are, have access to our service Titan. They can book the job and put it on the board. But us as managers, it's our due diligence to make sure they're dispatched and the mm -hmm. homeowners are that we're on our way. Um, now, if one of my call center agents was to take the phones, they are the lifeline for the evening. Um, they obtain the calls, classify the calls, dispatch, and also get a hold of the technician to send them their way to. Um, so it's two things, lifeline, one of our own home service hero agents or the call point agency who they have our procedures in place on how to book and uh, schedule out. How, how do you decide it's going to be one of your, your CSRs versus one of the managers or call point doing it? So the managers are already mandatory. We have three months ahead of time when they know they're on schedule. They're yep. my agent. It's up to them. It's optional at this point. Okay. Because okay. it's income. So it's okay. definitely optional. Sure. All right. So there's no structure like Monday and Tuesday you're doing this or or you could do this if you wanted to. Okay. If you, if you would like to, trust me, the owner would rather pay my CSR agents because they sure. know we're going to pay for every call versus a call agency. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then again, the managers are already set up every uh, month, once a month. Uh, depending on what we get falls. Okay, very good, very good. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, kind of same question. I'm gonna rephrase it a little bit. Uh, what What are your call center hours? Let's start there, and then do you have shifts? Who kind of handles after hours? Can you kind of tackle that cluster of questions? Yeah. Um, so our call center hours are Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, we do not have shifts per se. Um, everyone is mostly on an eight to five schedule with the exception of like a few of our team leads or managers. Um, and then also our dispatchers who tend to work past five most days uh, just to make sure the technicians are taken care of. Sure. Uh, but we're not a 24 seven company. Uh, mm -hmm. So we actually don't have a representative assigned to handle after hours calls. So when a customer calls in after 5 p.m., uh, we have a pre-recorded message just encouraging them to leave a message or submit an online form, um, and then they'll receive a call back by 8 a.m. the next morning. Okay. And very good. Uh, our customers are very understanding of that. I know it sounds a little crazy, uh, but they're very understanding of that, and um, you know we don't get a lot of pushback on that, thankfully. That's good. I think it's getting, I think it's changing. I think people understand, uh, especially <laughs> considering how difficult it seems to find employees in every industry that they're, mm -hmm. I think they're just happy that they can leave a message or, or know that they're going to get a call back. So right. that makes sense to me nowadays. Um, Melissa, I'm going to go ahead and, and throw the next line of questioning with you, start with you first. Um, what metrics or, or KPIs are you really tracking every day in the call center? You know, there's there's a whole host, you know, cancellation rate, call booking percent. What what do you really focus on um, every single day? So on a normal day, um, if we still need calls on our schedule, we always strive for about a 90 to 95 percent booking rate, and we'll right. want to keep our cancellation rate under 10 percent. Um, when those KPIs are off, the first thing we do is look at you know how busy was the day because we know that when we are really busy and we only have the opportunity to cherry pick our calls, our booking rate is going to go down because we sure. are having to turn away lower revenue producing calls in order to keep space open for the high priority calls. Sure. Um, so we kind of think of it as working smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. um, but if the day has not been busy and the KPIs are off, then that's a whole different conversation. That's when right. we just either during one-on-ones or as a team, because um, we have a very team management style, just, you know, what's up with the KPIs? Why are they off? And what do we need to do to get them back on track? Do you, do you dig like right into start listening to calls right away? Or do you, do you wait to go have that meeting maybe in a huddle the next morning? What do you what do you do? Depending on how busy it is, um, if if the opportunity is there to drill down and listen to calls, I absolutely will. Um, that's one of the benefits of me sitting on the floor sure. because I also listen throughout the day. I can hear if somebody's struggling on a call or if they're having trouble overcoming an objection, things like that. Yeah. Um, they'll drill down and listen to calls um, if I'm able to. I should say if I'm not on the phone. Um, yeah. 
And then if it's, if it's, you know, something maybe I don't feel comfortable addressing while I'm on the floor, then yeah, I will follow it up during a one-on-one. Sure. Sure. No, that makes sense. You don't want to, you don't have an awkward conversation in front of right. everyone, right? Um, you know, you, you mentioned something that kind of triggered something in my head in terms of if you have time. How how much of your day do you feel like you spend walking the floor and, or, or just kind of sitting and listening and, and coaching actively versus trying to fulfill all the management roles that there is to, to fill plus answering calls yourself? Like, do you, do you have a ballpark idea of what, what that breakdown looks like? Um, I would say, well, I would say it depends on the season. Um, right now, <laughs> That's a good point. so right now it's kind of like all hands on deck, whoever sure. can book, book a call, you know? Yeah. Um, but walking the floor again, because I sit on the floor, I'm always with the team. Um, right. so now there are times where, you know, I, I communicate like, Hey, I need to go head down to work on this specific thing. If you need me, you know, yeah. have tap or something to to pull me out of that hyper focus that I have um but I would say that again depending on the season it may be like 70 30 um 60 40 it just really depends on the day I mean it changes day to day okay so the mo- you said 70 30 60 40 in terms of you're spending more time uh observing or spending more time answering calls and doing the functions of the manager role um managing and coaching is actually take yeah got it okay that's good that's good to know all right thank you uh jenny i'm going to throw the the, the question of metrics and kpis over to you what what you know two or three or five are you really really observing every day and, and and coaching to um every day so with our um in the manager position that i'm in uh we have a 9 30 meeting every morning monday through friday and that's just pretty much knowing how many uh, lead calls are in inbound and how many did we book and so i'm looking at my girls booking rate daily um every morning and then once the morning settled every um before lunch and when i come back from lunch Mm -hmm. so we're definitely managing how many calls are being ran john uh, the owner of home service heroes he actually has an amount of per department how many calls need to be booked and Mm -hmm. by the next morning in our managerial meeting we're looking at them and he's like okay we expected our goal is 30 electrical calls booked and we only had 20 what happened right. with 10. Um, so we're definitely monitoring it that way. And as well as my girls booking rate for the 90%, our goal monthly is 90%. We actually have a monthly bonus incentive for the ladies. If as a whole, the department book 90% and above, uh, we each get about $200. So everyone's different, but that's our company per yeah. month. So we've actually made that bonus to last three months. Great. Um, yeah, so we're just pushing along. So yep. those are the primarily, uh, reports that I look after the KPIs and things like that. That's great. That's great. Now, let's say if your electrical division, you, I think you said that was the example you gave, is, is 10 calls short, mm-hmm. right? How do you, what do you do to jump into action to, to resolve that issue? Is so, it outbound calling or what do you do? So um, at the 930 meeting with the managers, I have to have an answer why we didn't book that. We were 10 calls short. So yeah. whether a technician landed uh, or, or we had a short influx of calls, at that point, my response to him would be, I had my girls, this is what we normally do. The girls would be outbound calling their lost calls, happy checks. And we actually have a thing called one percenters where if the ladies were to obtain um, an estimate that was two weeks old, they have free reign to gain that clientele, convert that job, and they gain 1% of that total sale. Oh, wow. So okay. Incentives, incentives, incentives are the thing that move my ladies. Um, so those are the three things that we try, try to tackle daily. and yep. If something shakes out, it shakes out. But I, at least I can go to him knowing that we did absolutely everything we did can. Everything. And here's yeah. my answer of why. But majority right. of the time, if we have less than 30, our guys have either landed or, you know, majority of the time they do land. Um, or if they've already ran through a good, a healthy amount of calls and we want to make sure that they're tackling that specific call and giving the client everything they could before moving them on to another one. Maybe they might be burnt mm-hmm. out. You know, you start looking at other things like that. It's not just yeah. call volume. It's the quality of every call. Right, right. Very good. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, Jane, we'll just go ahead and follow up with, with you, kind of the next line of questioning. Um, how, how does your de- uh, department prioritize calls? As, are they color-coded? Uh, maybe just talk about your prioritization uh, plan in general. 
So we definitely did have the colors in the beginning when I started, but I realized yeah. that my, my CSRs, re, uh, they reacted better to hot ticket items that were a bit okay. better than the color codes. Um, so I communicate very, uh, a lot of times with my technician, or excuse me, with my service of girls, majority of the day. So mm -hmm. once they all get in, we have a huddle. And again, before lunch and after lunch, we have a huddle, but the girls know, look, we're booking by priority. One and twos are first and foremost, threes and fours later down the week. So we always right. touch base. And we have about 13 to 14 electrical technicians right now. Mm -hmm. um, that's our biggest department in the company. So we'll see if someone lands, then we start going down by priority. So threes and fours are out if the majority of our technicians are landed. We want to keep it open for the guys who are um, still there. So we kind of just communicate a lot in regards to priorities one, two, three, and four, which is, I believe, the SGI standard. It's where mm -hmm. I learned. So ones and twos are my hot ticket items, and threes and fours, a couple of days out. That's right. Very good. Okay. Bob, let's the same same kind of line of question to you about prioritization. Uh, do you guys color code them or or maybe just kind of talk about how you guys prioritize calls in general at Sirius? Yeah, so our um, plumbing calls are grouped by levels. Um, so ours are kind of reversed as opposed to their priority levels. We have, well, we just call them levels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not sure. Levels. Um, so level one calls being like a low priority call, um, all the way to a level four call being a high priority call. Mm -hmm. um, we also, our team is very familiar with um, like, you know, different jargon of the industry, like garbage disposal versus water heater and garage. You know, they know the sure. different levels, but that's how we prioritize our plumbing jobs. And then mm -hmm. HVAC priority typically lies in how many units a customer has in their home. Yeah. Um, especially during the summer, it's most important for us to find that out. Um, but our dis our dispatch team does a fantastic job communicating the calls that they need to fill the schedule. Um, and again, just focuses on booking smarter, not harder. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. How, um, just as kind of a follow-up, how do you how do you manage the number of calls needed in an appointment window, you know, each day or week? Do you guys overbook at times? I mean, or or what do you guys do? So we don't, that? oh, <laughs> sorry. I, felt just, like no, I wanted to make sure you knew it was too, you, you, you. <laughs> Um, so we don't intentionally overbook our, our schedule. Uh, uh -huh. We, instead of offering windows, we schedule everyone, meaning all of our customers for an eight to six dispatch window. Um, oh, okay. So um, the eight to six dispatch window allows us more freedom in determining how many calls we need each day, depending on how many technicians are working. Mm -hmm. uh, so our formula is typically you know, four or three to four retail calls per retail technician. We also take on home warranty work as well. Right. We know right. warranty call can go faster than a retail call. Sure. Um, kind of do the math on that. But, and then of course we adjust that throughout the day as needed, but that's how we determine that number or how many calls we need per day. Do you, what do you, when you, when you communicate the customer a big window like that, do you give them an expectation in terms of when they'll get a phone call when the technician is dispatched to kind of, you know, maybe if they want to run an errand or something in between, or what do you, what do you guys, what's the process for you guys? Absolutely, because nobody ever just says, okay, that's great. So right. we, we <laughs> always follow up with, it's, it's just kind of a part of our scripting now, but we'll say, you know, it's an eight to six dispatch window. We do give you a call about 30 to 45 minutes ahead okay. of time. It's yeah. headed out. Uh, that way you're not bound to the home. Sure. Uh, always have the option to call us the day of your appointment and we can narrow it down much better at that point. Okay. And very understanding about that for the most part. Interesting. Good. Okay. Um, Janie, how many, how about you guys? Do you overbook at times or how do you make sure you have enough uh, calls at each, each window that you need? So our objective is to go into every day with an eight to 10 for each technician. Um, yeah. Two to three uh, jobs per AC technician and for electric they have three service windows 8 to 10 11 to 1 3 to 5 mm -hmm. um, so 2 to 3 for AC three at least three per technician for electrical and plumbing about at the same 2 to 3 now okay. if we go into a day where we're very overpacked for the day we still book standbys because there's a high chance a job's going to finish sooner um, and that also helps with making sure we've at least obtained a client's you know information a callback is better than a non-booked call at all 100%, 100%. We, we start talking about what you do, um, you know, when you don't, when you're missing, when you're short on calls, right? So you don't have to have that bad call, that bad conversation in the manager's meeting. And you we, you rolled through a whole series of things um, that you guys do. Um, how often, 
are you guys calling out? Like, and what do you tell, do you tell your, your CSRs, like the minute that there's not calls coming in, are they, are they actively outbounding right away? I mean, how does that, how do you handle that transition from inbound to outbound to make sure you're not short on calls? We do outbound calls daily. If um, by lunchtime, we'll know how that afternoon is going to go and the following morning. So yep. if we see that we're light before the first girl shift ends that morning or that, that afternoon, we're already calling out for the next day. Okay. And again, we have a really hefty standby list because we're very booked. So when we have our standby list, we continue to call them and obtain them for the following day. So I would say the girls are up probably 30 to 40 percent calling out outbounds as well as inbound. So it's pretty, okay. it's really good. And okay. I have the so majority of the three girls that are actively on um, main call taker, they're calling out about 60 to 40 percent. Okay. All right. And and talk about the um, how wh how what 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 call do you what calls do you start with in terms of outbounding and, and go down because you mentioned i'm sure you know you guys do hvac so there's the tune-up calls you want to book there's those one percent calls you reference kind of what's your your process uh in rolling through uh those types of customers and, and outbounding so the first call back is definitely our standby list because okay. those are the clients who are very fresh it's in their mind they're trying to get that service taken care of and we have a yep. so it's our standby mm -hmm. then it's our happy checks and then it's our club members because our club members are um they're semi-annual so some are six months three to four months you know they're not they're not due right away and sure. last um because the one percenters it's an elective thing to do um that's when it's the last one okay all right and happy checks ssp one percenters okay let's let's i'm i am intrigued by the one percenters i'm sure I'm, there's going to be some people that are, are intrigued as well what uh, are those just um uh, systems that weren't sold are those large uh tickets electrical tickets that weren't sold maybe kind of walk through what those jobs look like so honestly we call every customer back whether it's a 300 dollars gfi upgrade or a home rewire okay. i actually just had one of my csrs this year alone land a forty-seven thousand dollar drop and she got a nice paycheck yeah heck yeah 470 dollars was paid to her and that was, she followed up with that client two to three times then she finally sealed the client got the deposit for a partial and ended up selling the rest of the options that were on the ticket and wow. it's a very great incentive my girls get really excited about that and she started the year off with a great bonus she paid her car payment and just one yeah. customer Took about yeah. a month to close because it was a rewire and had other items like that, AC, plumbing, and electrical. Um, yeah. So at the end of the job, she did get that bonus. So the ladies are actually assigned a certain amount of technicians, um, mm -hmm. and that's up to them. It's it's a complete incentive thing they can do, but you know they do have a follow up section in Service Titan. Um, it's a program, and the ladies follow up with the clients, and they notate it, they record it. Client calls back, they secure the job. It's theirs. When um, just again to follow up on this, when when they when when one of your ladies is calling up on this giant rewire job, mm -hmm. like they're, they're not talking tech, right? Like how what's that conversation look like? How is it just touching base? And I tell my ladies to talk to them as if it's their sister or girlfriend. You know what I okay. mean? You have a client who has a really big kind of scary estimate that they're about to make this huge investment, and sure. I say talk to them as if they're your friend. Hey, yeah. how's it going? How is your technician? I see here you left some estimates. Are you ready to move forward with these? Yeah. How's your cat or how's whoever? Because a lot of the girls they end up forming uh, relationships over the phone with a tech with a customer, and sure. I'm like, hey, that call's already ten minutes <laughs> in. What's going on? Oh, we're, she was so sweet. We're talking about her husband or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I remember those clients, and honestly, we majority of the reviews that come in they also shout out the csrs because they're that personable over the phone that's great um, and then i always tell them one percenters they're your friend you know yeah. you're just telling them check on them and um not all the time are you going to turn a forty seven thousand dollar <laughs> estimate to an invoice, but sure. it's always sure. good to have that second follow-up and if it turns into something even better but i like how you frame it you know they don't feel like they need to try and do a, whole, a hard sales pitch pressure, or something yeah. it you has to be to natural do Yep, I like that a lot. I like it a lot. All right, very good. Um, well, so let's let's go with you on how, how what do you guys do when you don't have enough calls? I mean, are you guys do you have designated times that you're you're calling out? And if so, who are you calling? Um, kind of maybe uh, you know let us know what you guys do at Sirius. So we um, also have a standby list. Standby is a fantastic thing um, for customers as well as for us because. 
you know, you can't book every single person same day. Um, it helps overcome objections sometimes when you do have right. to book out to have that standby. So if we're running yeah. low on calls, um, which we also can tell that midday, if not later on in the morning, we'll, we can kind of tell where we're at. Um, we will start with that standby list. Um, mm -hmm. So find people who are booked out later in the week, maybe next week, you know, start trying to move them up. Um, and then we go into customers that maybe they submitted an online request or um, they called us to book and then they said, oh, got to call you back. You know, maybe somebody we haven't heard back from will sure. follow them. Hey, are you still in need of service? Um, and then also on job returns, because technicians, you know, will submit a job return. They need to go back and do X, Y, Z at a call. We'll try to reach out to the customer, can't reach them. So we'll start following up on those as well. Okay. Um, for HVAC, of course, if those calls are low, um, we immediately start reaching out to members um, who may be due for a seasonal visit. Mm -hmm. um, not that calls are really low right now in the hundred, sure. but <laughs> they were. You know, there are customers where you know they are calling and they're trying to schedule a maintenance visit, and we're like, right. oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Um, so those, that's a good example of a customer we would reach out to to say, hey you still need that visit? We're happy to come out there. Um, so that's kind of what we do to fill in those gaps throughout the day. Mm -hmm. When when do you, is that the same situation as Jenny was saying? Is that, is that an afternoon thing? Once you, you see where the call volume is trending and then you're like, okay, we need to either hop on this or or how do you guys approach that? Yeah, I would definitely say uh, midday is is that sweet spot to look at it throughout the day um, because yeah. more too soon, you don't know, you know, are you going to get it? into a situation where your guys are taking longer on calls and you might be forced to reschedule and then it's going to fill up your schedule the next day. Um, midday is a good time to look at that to start coming up with that game plan. Okay, very good. Do you guys do any kind of um, callbacks on unsold equipment or, or, you know, large tickets that, you know, are you just been so busy that it, it's not something you've had to, to go back to? Oh, we definitely do call back on those. Um, I would say our dispatch team uh, does a really great job of following up on those. Um, I think their incentive, well, they they have other incentives, obviously, for that. But sure. the incentive is the dispatchers um, do build relationships with the technicians, which is great because then the technician is asking about their job. You know, right. have we customer we followed up? And so the dispatchers do follow up with those customers to say, hey, are you ready to move forward with this estimate? And if they are, then we get them scheduled. Support for this podcast comes from A.O. Smith. Sold exclusively by plumbing wholesalers and plumbing contractors, A.O. Smith's selection of residential and commercial water heaters, boilers, and storage tanks is unmatched for quality and diversity. Its family of brands include State, American, and Takagi. Anywhere hot water is needed, A.O. Smith can provide an energy-efficient solution with maximum value during and for years after installation. And A.O. Smith stands behind its products and its customers with world-class service, combining cutting-edge technology with committed people who take pride in being the very best. As the leading manufacturer of water heaters, A.O. Smith is committed to helping contractors succeed. Visit www.hotwater.com contractor to see why becoming an A.O. Smith contractor can help you find new ways to connect with both your customers and potential customers and take your business to the next level. Do you guys sell clubs over the over the phone or, or do you just set it up and kind of start talk about the benefits to allow the technician to close it? What do you guys, what's your approach? We definitely sell clubs over the phone. Um, if there's an opportunity to pitch it, we will. If there's mm -hmm. not an opportunity, we still pitch it. <laughs> yeah. We try to make it on the yeah. call. Um, sure. You know, make a weird little segue, but we'll get it there. Um, but we definitely do sell memberships over the phone um, because, and, and we try to make the customer see that it makes sense for them to have it. Uh, sure. But then there are times where we, you know, talk about it over the phone, the customer wants to think about it. And then oh, if yeah. that's the case, no problem. We just put it in the job notes and set that technician up for success when he goes out there so he can close that. Sure. Um, if you don't mind me following up one more on those on clubs, what what do you uh, what do you teach your team to talk? What kind of benefits do you do you teach that they should should really communicate? Is it just a discount, or or do you hammer away the the other you know benefits of having a club membership? What do you guys do? So I would say um, 
if you're selling your club memberships based solely on discounts, you're going to have tons of people that cancel. That value holds for so long because people will think, well, I don't need a plumber every single month. Thank God. You know, Um, but we always lead it off by, you know, this is what you're getting for that membership. Yes, you may get these discounts, but what you're really getting is preventative maintenance for your AC unit, for your heating. Go into examples as to why that's important. Um, yeah. Go examples like kind of how what we're dealing with now. If it's 100 degrees, we have people calling in trying to do maintenance because something's going on with their unit. Sure. We just try to build the value in the service, and the discounts are just the cherry on top. Sure, sure. What? Well, how is your plan an annual plan, or is it a monthly? perpetual or how do you how do you guys sell it we have an annual plan an annual plan okay Mm -hmm. all right and does it re does it automatically re-up or do you have to actively sell that every year so unfortunately it does not auto renew right now um we kind of use that to our advantage i think with customers we say yeah you can sign up it doesn't auto renew although we're working learning how to figure out auto renew (laughs) Sure. Um, then you change a script. That's all. <laughs> exactly. Then you just the script, and then you're like, hey, you don't have to worry about it. It's right. always good. Active. It's fine. Right. Um, but yeah, we do have to actively chase those renewals um, yeah. every month. And so that's that's another thing that our CSRs work on throughout the day. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll give them here are the members that we need to renew. And there's incentives tied to that as well. But that's another thing that they do to, to work on throughout the day. OK, very good. Jenny, I know I think Sonia mentioned you guys have a. A, some kind of a you have a contest for club sold or you've done something for airpods or she wanted me to ask you about it so i don't want to get in trouble i gotta ask you. <laughs> yes. yes so it was actually i believe last summer um you know we were just just trying to kick off the summer with a good uh, one with a, a lot of club memberships and seeing what we can turn over because i feel at some point we feel like we tackled all of our central area where we probably replaced everybody's units so we're like let's bring some new clientele into the mix so right. the had a competition where whoever sold the uh, 30 memberships first, new clients, would receive AirPods. Excuse me, I'm an Android person, so. Uh, (laughs) I won't hold that against you. So, you know, John gave me his card, and I went to Target, and I bought some, and I brought them, and I put them right there in our uh, floor, and I was like, whoever gets to 30, I had a whiteboard and everything. I said, whoever gets to 31st, you will win these. And the competition was started Monday it was going to end Friday and by Wednesday I had uh, one girl she won them and I was nice. like well, at least leave them up there until Friday so it looks like we did <laughs> she killed it killed it killed it killed it and on top of getting the airpods she also we have a little incentive it's nine dollars and ninety nine cents that you obtain per home um so she made that on her next check and she had some airpods nice. to take um, so yeah, definitely. Nice. That was our hey. little thing that we did. I haven't decided what we're gonna do this summer because uh, yeah. we're gonna bring new blood, but I have more girls, so I gotta see what the, it's gonna move them. Yeah, that's right. Hey, I'll tell you what, I I uh, I didn't understand the thing about AirPods till someone got me some, and now I <laughs> I can't live without them. Uh, I don't like holding a phone in my head. So anyway, yeah. that's funny, but that's a good that's a good little nugget there for people. Um, what now, Jay? I'll just go ahead and follow up with you, and then Melissa, I'll ask you the same. What do you do when you have too many calls? Let's say like right now when it's 110 degrees, and or at least it is in Middle America and Texas and Missouri where I'm at. I don't know if it's quite as hot for once in Florida, but you certainly get some real hot temps, right? When the phones just just turned Definitely. on. Definitely. Um, so yeah. Think? So that's been a little bit of an issue we've been tackling. Well, a great issue to have though. The sure. tackling the last couple of weeks. So we book by priority. Obviously, club members are first and foremost. They're in right. within 24 hours. Um, a book date. And with just non-club members, it's by priority. So I'd rather take. Sorry, I'd rather take a 15-year-old unit than a two-year-old unit that probably has a clogged drain line. Uh, sure. So it's definitely by priority and location. So if I have a no call, especially with an overbooked schedule, and let's say a CSR agent didn't get the information I needed, she will definitely be calling that client back just to know the age of the equipment <laughs> um, and what they're looking to do. Everybody wants repair, but sometimes replacement is needed. So that's how we yeah. do it, based by priority. And of course, um, who's available that day to handle sure. those types of jobs. Sure. Melissa, how about you? I, again, I know it's uh, it's super hot right now in, in Middle America. What are you it doing? Uh, <laughs> what are you doing to uh, to juggle all those phone calls you're getting? So Janie took the words right out of my mouth. Um, yeah. 
always, if we do get into that situation, which it can happen, uh, we will always reschedule low priority calls first. Um, so again, that's why it's so important during the call taking process that we ask, you know, how old the units are, how old your water heater is, where is it located, how many units do you have in your home? Those probing questions set us up later to make those determinations. Um, but we do, again, we can usually tell midday where our guys are at and if we're going to be in that situation. And our dispatch team, again, does a good job of keeping customers updated throughout the day. And mm -hmm. then if we start to see that that's the direction we're going, then we'll start taking the lower priority calls off of technicians and reaching out to those customers to reschedule. Okay, very good, very good. A uh, little little shift, um, let's talk training. Uh, Melissa, let's go ahead and start with you in this one. What is What does training look like for your team? Um, maybe also distinguish what you do for onboarding as well. I always consider that obviously a big part of training and yeah. do they do any kind of ride-alongs with other departments? Maybe kind of just talk comprehensively what that looks like for your Yeah. Um, so day one, our call center reps are given an extensive training packet, um, just covering day-to-day -day tasks, the type of calls that'll come into the call center, um, what your job notes should look like, scripting, company jargon, et cetera. Sure. Um, then we spend several days walking through each page of that together while they sit with a designated trainer. So That's they right. may sit with me for a couple of days and I may sit them with a team lead, you know, just yeah. whoever um, we feel is best suited for that that day, then we'll sit them with them. Mm -hmm. uh, but this allows them to also get on the job training um, because not everybody learns the same. Right. And, you know, something they see me do and then something they see somebody else do tomorrow they, it helps put those pieces of the puzzle together sometimes a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but we'll conference them into calls so they can listen to both sides of it, just so they can get that pretty picture painted about what's going on on this call. Um, and it's always proves to be very beneficial during training when they can see both sides of the call. Yeah. Um, ongoing training is really truly an everyday occurrence with us. Um, sure. As you'll know, there's always something new to learn in our industry. Changes. <laughs> So I feel like we're learning new stuff every day. Um, and then we've been pretty religious about um, enrolling team members into learning alliance classes um, mm -hmm. just whenever, you know, it, it fits in with our schedule and based on the, the criteria that's there. So um, yeah. that's very helpful for the team as well. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Very good. Jenny, how about you? What's what's training like uh, look like for uh for you guys from onboarding to ongoing training and everything in between? So with us, with the um, first we start with the hiring process, we have one to two interviews and we let them know the expectation of what our company is, what we expect out of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the day they get hired, we do a walkthrough so they get familiar with the facility, get to be introduced to each one of the service managers, teammates, if they're here, show them the warehouse, like, you know, the basics. Um, when it comes to training, I actually utilize the hub, the SGI videos, the Learning Alliance videos a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So they have one to two days just watching the videos of the call center basics. Um, each of my ladies gets a training manual and it's in a binder where they can put some notes in, all of our um, products, things that we offer to our clients, things like that, and also to yeah. jot down so and another thing is we go through the handbook with them we spend a day or two reviewing the handbook and you know so they're aware of like holidays off pay things like that now when yeah. it comes to training in person um they spend the first week shadowing myself and then sitting with some agents they uh the second week again i got a couple days shadowing and just hearing what we're doing but by the end of the second week they're assisting with outbounding calls, the, the letting the homeowners know when we're heading that way Okay. Um, with the phones and obviously the service Titan training as well, the academy, um, to know the ins and the outs of service Titan, um, yeah. so shadowing, handbook, manuals, a lot of learning alliance videos, and then service Titan training so they get familiar with the web, uh, the software that we used. Yeah. And yeah, they do have a designated person as well. Um, yeah. so they sit with us the second whole week and the first week is kind of like um training online kind of the okay. online service Titan academy okay uh jenny i'm gonna ask you and melissa i will follow up with you kind of the same question you mentioned kind of a, an onboarding book 
Did you mm -hmm. put that together? I know certain path SGI, we had something that you could kind of base it off of. For people that are, are smaller members aspiring to get bigger to, that need tools like that, what did, how did you put yours together? So it is half and half. I will say that the first half is Electric Today's uh, material. Yeah. Um, basics of knowing everyone's cell phone number. We have a call log um, that shows all the everyone's cell phone number, who they are, their um, position in the company. Um, of course, our hours. Uh, appearance, what we are uniforms, things like that. It's a good <clears throat> sure. that's a little guy to go to. Um, and then the end of the book is more of like booking priorities, expectation for gaining club memberships, your 90% rate, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very so good. Very mm -hmm. They keep it with them, and then they always add to it daily. Or if I get a new warranty packet that'll help with um, some of the stuff that we sell here, we always add to it, and they keep okay. it. Thing. Very good. Well, Melissa, do you what's your what's your packet maybe that that you kind of use with onboarding? Is what maybe kind of speak to what's in there again for people that are watching, listening that you're like, oh boy, we need something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's a packet that I've kind of pieced together over my time here. Um, sure. It definitely has a directory, like she said, um, because it's important for them to know how, who everybody is, how to reach them. Um, mm -hmm. It includes basic call taking scripting um objections just different scripting how to you know say say that sure. um bullet points on again these are the type of calls that i'll call into the call center just so they aren't scared the first time they have to answer the phone i'm like here's a whole list of what it's going to be i'm just telling you yeah. um, i'm trying to think what all's in there um there's just a bunch of different things like that um sure. that I've just kind of pieced together over time screenshots i'm a real big uh fan of um visual aids and sure. uh, directives and things like that so just anything the idea behind creating it was if you were somebody that's never been in this industry you've never worked in a call center can i hand this to you and you learn how to book a call by the right. end of the week and right. so that's kind of what the process was, was in my mind when putting that together but those are sure. a few things I like it very good and, and yeah and for for members that are, are watching or listening there is there is a tool that at least can, that you can customize and you can change obviously as much as you want in in the hub that we put together some years back so it's at least a good way to start and then obviously we just like any tool with that we offer personalize it um melissa i'm gonna go ahead uh, we're gonna change the line of question a little bit i want to talk about you know we talk about training to me always the next thing is the, to talk about is is you know talking to your team about their performance uh, do you guys do you utilize one-on-ones just a, you know every month or so i mean you just re, you lean on annual performance reviews how do you kind of have an individual conversation with each team member to let them know how he or she is doing and that you're doing great or this is something we need to work on what's what's your approach yeah so we do um weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings it's kind of the theme throughout the company um but i do weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings with um the call center team um, i do this to not only discuss their performance um but for each of us to hold each other accountable um mm. you know so if there's things they need for me i bring it back to the next meeting and vice versa um it gives them the opportunity to communicate what again they need from me um mm -hmm. and it's a time to highlight accomplishments uh maybe area of opportunities and then it just really helps build that work relationship sure. um opens that line of communication so how long are those those meetings typically they, they're pretty brief then it's it's maybe three or four questions you know what do you need from me how can i help you this is there something i'm seeing maybe kind of walk through the exact outline of what that yeah. that looks like yeah so they're about 30 minutes okay. um sometimes a little longer if somebody talks too much like that's usually <laughs> a home run over but um yeah. very well uh but yeah they're usually about 30 minutes and um you know i i like to always kick it off on a positive note obviously um yeah, sure. it's not a it's not a write-up it's just hey let's yeah, let's no, talk no. um yeah. so you know we kick it off on a positive note maybe some casual conversation get into it um the meat of it is always these are the areas of opportunity the coaching opportunities and then i always like to follow it up with a positive note again just to kind of sandwich that um yeah. but yeah and then of course the close would be you know what do you need from me you know is there anything i can do sure 
make your life better, basically. <laughs> there you the go. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Uh, Janie, same same question to you. How do you kind of talk to your team one on one about their performance? So um, we always have a morning powwow once everybody's in, but the one on one, um, every girl has a folder. Um, we kind of talk about where they want to be, what they're doing great at, what they need assistance on, or okay. what can I help them with for more training, things like that. And then I get back with them, you know, by that end of the day or by the following next time we meet. Um, yep. And then if anything, if I see anything that Sonia might send me, or if I review their call and I'll say, hey, I think this would be a better way to approach it. Let's remind, remember that binder, keep it out, write it down or um, objections or objections a lot whenever a client wants to fight them on a call and they're losing calls like that. So we review the call as well together. Um, just constant communication. And of course, one-on-one -on -one training is always key, but my girls, we like to do it in a group setting. Um, so if I have a girl who feels like, hey guys, I just lost a second call and it's only in the morning, uh, what am I doing wrong? We'll either listen to the call as a group Great. or remember, hey, you know you have a leeway on certain priority levels where you can apply a coupon or put them on a standby or even just see what we can do, get with the service manager, what we have an offer, a special going on. So we like to communicate as a group and then of course one-on-ones um, just, just talk about certain things that they want to improve on or hey, you're just doing an amazing job. Keep it up. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, I'm going to speed ahead. We've got, I still got some questions and we're, we've got a ton of questions we've gotten from a, a huge audience. We've got a lot of people watching today. Um, let's talk comp a little bit. Jenny, what, what's comp look like for your CSRs and dispatchers? Uh, I'm assuming is it an hourly? I, I know there's different spiffs we've talked about. So uh, my girls are hourly. Um, mm -hmm. They get weekly and we have a couple of incentives of course we have the phones if one of my girls wants to take the phones after hours they obtain uh, twenty dollars and seventy cents per booked call okay. and for non-booked call or marketing whatever the case may be it's a dollar seventy that's additional to their okay. hourly week and then of course the ssp memberships it's nine dollars and ninety nine cents and then of course lastly the one percenters which is percent. <laughs> i like it. it's very straightforward <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's right. Melissa, how about you? What, what's your uh, what's your team? How are they compensated? Maybe kind of roll through some of the things they can earn. Yeah, so they're paid hourly. Um, all CSRs and dispatchers are on an hourly rate. Um, mm -hmm. Plus, they get spiffs and bonuses based on sold memberships, um, different incentives we offer that could vary month to month. But, you know, if they're referring like a vendor partner or um other available services, I guess, uh, you know, that is available to them as well, but yeah. hourly SPIFs bonuses is, is the short okay. answer. Thank Very good. Me. I like <laughs> it. Uh, just to change line of question here a little bit, but I'm gonna stick with you, Melissa. How about happy calls? We call them happy calls, kind of the follow-up calls, make sure the service was okay. Um, do you guys do them? When do you do them? How are they valuable for you guys? Yeah, we most definitely do them. Uh, our CSRs handle these outbound calls throughout the day, just as technicians finish up on their jobs. Um, happy calls are, they're valuable mostly because it allows us as a company to address any concern that might have come up during the visit, um, mm -hmm. which of course in turn prevents a customer from later leaving us a negative review. So it gives right. us the opportunity to kind of catch that before they shout from the rooftops. Yeah, um, yeah. But it also allows us the opportunity to ask for a positive online review as well. So, but it's specific to our CSRs. They're the ones that do it and they do it throughout the day. Um, okay. again. So, so it doesn't necessarily happen just as the technician is getting to the truck or to try and catch anything. It just kind of happens as you guys can squeeze them in. Hello? What's that? I lose you. Jenny there? I think I, I, oh, okay. Well, let's jump to you because I, I, we might have lost Melissa. Uh, uh -oh. How do you how, how do you handle uh, happy calls at, at, with you guys at Home More Service Heroes? So uh, again, each girl has her own amount of technicians that she follows weekly, monthly. Those are hers for the time they're here. Um, they are done daily by the following because our payroll is Sunday to Monday. By the following Monday, the week prior has to be complete. Okay. Um, so whether it's daily, that all of them were done in one day, regardless by the next pay uh, payroll week, it has to be completed. Okay, so that's your timeline on it. Okay. Yeah. Very good, very good. Um, Melissa, are you on by chance? Or if not, no biggie, we can keep moving forward. Melissa, hello, hello, I guess not. No, all right, well, this will go even quicker then. Jamie, I wanna kind of roll, just go through some common objections, because I'm, I'm assuming we have lots of 
of call takers that are on in addition to owners and managers. So they're always looking for nuggets, right? So how do you handle customers that, that give you guys pushback on, on a service fee? Whenever a client gives us pushback on our service fee, we don't waver from our, our standards. They stay high. Yeah. We advise them, reiterate them once or twice until the client understands what they're getting. Um, another one is if they don't want to pay a service fee, they want to price right now over the phone, we start asking questions. I tell my girls, right. don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask where their panel is located. Ask the seer of their AC unit or even ask how high are their ceilings. Things like this, the client realizes, oh, it's not as easy as just a price over the phone. Yeah. Um, you know, they have to challenge them back respectfully, at least. Um, and then the client realizes, you know what, this company knows exactly what they're talking about. Let me give them a shot. You know, we do lose those clients where they're like, you know yeah. what, I'll call you back. Let me talk to my husband. Yeah. You know, a majority of the time they call back after an hour or so. And I can totally tell they've been calling around. I was like, look, Miss Smith, we already spoke once before. Let me lock you for today, one to three. You know. Yeah. Let's just be real upfront. You know, yeah. you need service done, right? <laughs> How do, how do you, how do you, I mean, is that just through the training and, and you know, the, the CSRs and how to talk, start asking questions about where the panel is and all that stuff? I mean, does that just come with time and doing it or how do you get, what's both. your approach? You yeah. know, when I first started, I was, you know, waving diagnostics. I had no idea what I was doing. And I right. was like, enemy number one to the technicians. Now I'm like, say waving diagnostics. Yeah, 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 that'll do that. I was doing when I first started here, um, I went to Milestone my very first year and that changed everything. Missy and Sonia, they definitely helped me out a lot. They're really oh, great. That's great. Um, so everything I know now is privy to them. They definitely yeah. helped me yesterday. I definitely helped our company, with, especially for my call center. But honestly, it will also come over time. And you just have to know what personality you're dealing with. And right. uh, make sure you know all the facts and give your, your customer, if not a little bit more information than they ask, because they realize, you know what? They know what they're doing. Let's give them a shot. Yeah, yeah. How about uh, how about complaints? Someone, you know, it, it, things happen. You big, you're big business. You guys, lots of service calls. Maybe a technician accidentally did something. No idea he did it. You know, dinged a door, whatever, with some tool. How do you handle the just red hot customer who maybe just is having a rough day, and you're the one they're taking it out on? So what you know, do you do in those situations? I get that more than you would think. And uh, I'm the one who my ladies, I can hear them going like this, like Janie, can you please help me with this client? And I was like. Yeah them over um honestly how i do it i just have to stay calm you know yeah. the client is the reason why our lights are on obviously yeah. if that's being irate profanity i'm going to release the call and let them know i'm going to release the call because of profanity etc but yeah. i take it and then i see out of the whole argument their problem was you know so let's say price okay i understand it's a price issue well, let's focus on that Everything else can go out the door as long as let's make sure your questions are answered, uh, sure. you're satisfied with the company, and we keep you for a lifelong. You know, so okay. out of all the jargon that they're saying, get down to the root of the issue, come up with a solution. I'm the type I always focus on a solution once I hear the problem, right. and just go head on from there. Is it typically? I mean, is it, is it stuck where you're just like, hey, I'm, I got to give you this person some money off if it's price or if they if if they damage the home, maybe how little it might have been, but it's perceived damage like what do you do in those circumstances so if it's like a drywall issue we don't cover yeah. drywall in our repairs we always advise the client that if it's a drywall issue you're liable for getting that repaired paint yeah. we don't do that but sure. if the client really feels like we totally and truly disrespected their property we're going to yeah. make it right and make sure they're taken care of okay. so find the problem give them a solution i like to give options whether could, can we have somebody come out and do this drywall okay. or would some balance taken off or hey let us assist you with a free ac clean in tune maybe okay. they'll get a chance and maybe another lead for a different department sure. or discount money off a of future service so always have a, a lot of solutions in your wheelhouse and know which type of client and i like to research the client's history so if they're a new client you know it's pretty mm -hmm. easy to see what they want but if it's an older client we know how they like their certain things certain um, homes only like go into this room specifically don't go into my bedroom and we sure. violated their space and we're like okay yeah. we know how to rectify it in the future so That's just good. know your client and you know long time or new client and go from there with a the solution okay very good all right last question for me and then we got a whole bunch i'm gonna roll through hopefully you got a few more minutes for us um we talked about the negative negativity how about fun stuff how do you keep it fun like i know that's a lot of pressure you guys have a lot of pressure every day how do you i keep mean it loose? every holiday is celebrated in my department the other, the other department <laughs> Good to my Easter, St. Patrick's Day, Mother's Day. You know what? Father's Day is this Sunday, so I got to think of something before Friday for my guys. We yeah. do everything. 
we dress up, you know, I myself, I'll come looking silly in a weird, crazy outfit once or twice, and I'll just make sure my girls are happy. We did yeah. an egg hunt. We did an egg hunt for Easter, <laughs> and whoever won the golden egg had a day of PTO. Obviously, oh. it was approved by the owner, yeah. like, hey, can you throw me a PTO ticket for a day? Yeah. But, you know, I always try to make it fun in the little things. And they really, I feel like my girls really appreciate that. Sometimes I'll come with a box of donuts and they got to tell me, they tell me to stop because I'm making them gain some weight and it's the summer. But I can't help. I always want, I see their smile and I want to do the little things to add up to, you know, great quality girls that I have. I like it. I like it. Yeah, you're a people person. I can tell. All right. (laughs) We'll roll through some of these questions that we got while we were chatting. Uh, Do you use a separate company for your nighttime service? Yes. We said call point. You covered that. Uh, let's see here. Do all of your CSRs have the ability to take payments? That's a good good question. I would assume so. Yes, they have the ability to dispatch and accept payments and um, convert any type of jobs. Definitely, they can take payments. Okay, excellent. Where do you keep your standby list so everyone in the team can see it? Is it a physical list, digital? What do you guys have? So we have a service tie-in software and we actually have a technician it's under electric today um, john made that one so even service managers can generate estimates things like that it's at the very bottom it's like an admin login and that's where they're at and they're just stacked very it's good. at the very bottom okay uh how long do you train until you put someone on the phone that's a good question i didn't follow About up two, with. i'd say two weeks two weeks okay yeah. so it's and always a hard two weeks sometimes can you tell maybe someone needs a little more time, you'll give them that, so? Honestly, I tell the girls, the first three months, you're gonna feel like you're running around with your head cut off. <laughs> months, trust me, you're gonna be t- teaching me something. And then yeah. after the three months, you still feel like that, let's go back to the drawing boards and go from there. Okay, excellent. All right, very last question. Just any, Jenny, thank you, by the way, for all your time, really appreciate it. Um, any final advice you might have for our audience as it pertains to running a call center, helping CSRs and dispatchers be successful, anything you think we maybe didn't cover? Honestly, just working in an environment where your CSR agents can come to you, talk to you personally, something about business, just overall being a positive force in that center. Um, Because if you're having a bad day, they're going to have a bad day. If you're having a great day, they're going to bounce off of you guys. So you're the center. So sometimes I even have to check myself. I'm very happy, but you know, those days are, oh, you might have day, so I have to check yeah. myself and make sure, you know, I'm center in the call center. So I have to make sure we're all having a great day. So That's great. positive That's attitude. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, Janie, thank you so much for your time. And thank, thank you everyone for watching live. And to those who asked plenty of great questions, uh, just a reminder, the video will be available soon on your certain path member website. It'll also be later distributed as an episode of the successful contractor show, which is available on YouTube and your podcast player of choice. So again, thank you everyone. I look forward to seeing you for our next monthly member discussion on July 20th. Our topic will be how to run a healthy family business. That ought to be interesting. I look forward to see it, seeing you then. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jenny. Take care. That's Janie Contreras of Home Service Heroes in Tampa, Florida, and Melissa Holland of Serious Plumbing and Air Conditioning in Carrollton, Texas, discussing all things call center with me. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If so, please like and subscribe on YouTube. If you're on your favorite podcast player, please leave us a five-star review. That two seconds you take to leave a review will help other success-minded contractors like you find us and hopefully get a little bit better, which elevates our entire industry. And please join me for future episodes. This has been The Successful Contractor, powered by CertainPath. Support for this podcast comes from Home Depot Pro Trades. At the Home Depot Pro Trades, our job is helping you do yours. Powered by HD Supply, we are uniquely positioned to help drive your business through unrivaled access to professional-grade plumbing, electrical, and HVAC products, and innovative business solutions such as our StockWise Inventory Management Program, fully customizable to meet your needs and improve productivity. Our national network of distribution centers and more than 2,200 store locations provide national reach with a local focus, giving unmatched convenience and product availability. We power pros to do more. The Successful Contractor Podcast is part of the Certain Path family. Certain Path is the largest member owned best practices organization for independent residential services contractors. We provide our members a competitive edge through proven proprietary management tools and expertise, marketing programs, training, and group buying power, along with a highly active and eager to help membership. 
For more information about Certain Path, visit mycertainpath.com. Thank you.